Okay, so we were just looking at the uh, carbon-free energy requirements, and uh, the red curve uh, tells us how much carbon-free energy we would need to produce um, given the assumptions that we've made here uh, and given uh, the uh, scenarios uh, shown for both carbon emissions and uh, CO2 concentrations. Uh, we can also see how our assumptions uh, regarding each of these terms uh, compare to historical uh, numbers, uh, population growth um, in the past versus our projected population growth uh, under this, uh, uh, this assumption that we've made of uh, stabilizing global population at 11 billion um, uh, later this century or early next century. Uh, the assumption of a GDP per person rel relative economic expansion of 1.6% per year. And these are the historical values, the pluses, and the curve shows what we're projecting for the future. Um, energy intensity, uh, our curve sort of follows um, the past couple decades of data as far as energy intensity is concerned. And so we might imagine that there have been some developments in uh, technology um, that have uh, led to a trend in recent decades that may be more representative of the trend we would expect in the future than, say, the numbers from the early 20th century. So our uh, projected energy intensity over time um, sort of matches the, the past uh, few decades of energy intensity uh, information. And uh, finally, carbon efficiency. Uh, this is the decline we're projecting as we become more carbon efficient in uh, our energy uh, usage. Um, fewer gigatons of carbon produced per terawatt. Um, we are extrapolating the past trend um, and uh, we project uh, uh, increasing uh, carbon efficiency, increasingly less reliance on carbon-based uh, energy as time goes on. So these are the underlying assumptions in our default uh, projection here. Um, and as we've seen um, in that default projection, which corresponds to business as usual, uh, we're going to be upwards of uh, 700 parts per million by the end of the century. If we're looking to stabilize CO2 concentrations at, say, 550 parts per million, uh, down in here, the purple curve, then uh, clearly uh, we are going to need to change our behavior. We're going to need to change these various terms, um, some combination of these terms, in such a way that we lower CO2 um, increase and accordingly, as the uh, purple curve shows, uh, we would need to uh, produce less carbon-free energy um, in, uh, in, in that stabilization scenario, in the 550 uh, parts per million stabilization scenario. So we can play around with these numbers and try to figure out how we would actually go about achieving a particular stabilization, um, how, uh, what terms, uh, we might be able to uh, change through a technology and through future uh, policy um, changes and uh, how those changes would translate to a CO2 emission scenario and our ability to stabilize CO2 concentrations at some particular level. So the next thing we'll do is to play around a little bit um, with these numbers and uh, see if we might be able to uh, lower our projected uh, CO2 increase from the current trajectory, the business as usual trajectory that has us at 700 parts per million, well over twice pre-industrial by the end of the century. 